Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be looking at a simple way to use the color information that we have, um, that we have found in the previous video um, with the notion of distance in image space. So let's go to the notebook. So I have here loaded uh, the same image as in the previous video and already done the conversion to HSV so that we can look at, uh, at both uh, information. And just as a reminder uh, from the previous lab, um, one of the ways that we uh, can visualize the color information contained in the image is by doing a 3D plot uh, uh, in, the in the color space, sorry, so where the, the, the axes are the uh, red, green and blue uh, channels or uh, the HSV channels for the HSV image and so each um, position in the image to each pixel in the image corresponds a position in um, image space in color space sorry um, so what can we do with uh, with that well uh, an interesting notion that we can use is the notion of distance so when we think about distance in general uh, in, in an image we, we tend to think about distance in the uh, image space so in the, the pixel space here and we can compute the distance between the Euclidean distance between two points in in the image and this will allow us typically to define neighborhoods of an image so if we want, for instance, to um, to determine the, the distance of every pixel to a uh, reference pixel in the image, we can make a quick uh, method to do that. Um, so let's do a method called distance image space. And we want the distance for every pixel in an image with uh, reference coordinates. Uh, what we can do is create a distance map which will have the same size as the original uh, image but with, with just uh, one channel so it will be uh, what I want to put in this distance map is for each pixel the distance to the um, reference points that I've, uh, that I've made that I've chose um, and so I can just go through every pixel in the image. So first in the vertical axis, then the horizontal axis, and the value in the distance map will be the Euclidean distance between the current position that I'm looking at and the position that I put in the coordinates. So I will have i minus coordinates 0 square i minus coordinates 1 squared and I can put the square root, so I'm using the numpy method uh, for the square root um, of uh, that and this will be the distance okay and I can return that so what can I do with that well let's define a point for instance uh, right here in the middle of the sky I can use what is it uh, 200 600 so if I defined the coordinates of 200, 600. I can say that my distance map is distance in image space between the image and the coordinate, coordinates that I choose. And I can plot that with image show. G minus coordinates one, sorry, small mistake. Okay, and so I will have something relatively uh, unremarkable and unsurprising, which is just that uh, the distance increase uh, with this uh, circular pattern. Um, but I can quickly, so here I have a, have a reference uh, of the distance between uh, a point and uh, a point a reference point in the, in the image and any other point in the image. What could I do with that? Well, one thing that I could do is to, dis to, to create a mask to select, for instance, every pixel that are closer than a certain threshold uh, in, the, um, in, in terms of distance. So, for instance, uh, let's choose uh, one threshold over here. Uh, it could be, okay, let's take, let's take 300, for instance. I can create a mask saying that my mask is where everywhere where the distance map is lower, the value in the distance map is lower than 300. And then I will create a copy of my original image. And I will say that 
anywhere in this image where the mask value is false, so everywhere this condition is not uh, met, I will put a value of 0. And if I do that, I can uh, so uh, select based on the uh, Euclidean distance in the image space. I can select uh, a certain uh, neighborhood of the uh, of the image, so the, the all the pixels that are closer than a certain distance. So this does not seem uh, in this case very uh, very useful, but sometimes it can uh, be interesting to 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 find. Uh, to only look at a, a region of the image close to a certain reference point. Um, but what can we do now if instead of looking at the um, distance in image space, we look at the distance in um, color space. Okay, So in the, the new distance will be uh, the distance between the color of a certain pixel and the colors of every uh, other pixel in the image. So let's um, create a new method uh, here. I will create a distance in color space between an image and a reference point. And now what I will need this time is to first take the uh, reference the reference color will be the, co the color of the reference points. Okay? And in the same way as I've done uh, before, I can create distant map, go through every pixel, except that here now what I will um, what I will look at is the difference between the color of the uh, pixel that I'm looking and my reference color. Okay. So if I do that um, so this will be a uh, vector with three values, the red, green, and blue, or the HSV uh, value, depending on which uh, image I'm using. Um, so a vector with three values. This will also be a vector with three values. So if I do the, um, the difference here, it will do it uh, item by item. So it will do uh, red uh, minus the reference red, green minus the reference green, blue minus the reference blue, and I will get uh, three um also a vector with three values in this so i need to i want to square each of those three values so this will be done uh, here and then i need to take their sum to get the euclidean uh, distance i need to take their sum as i've done here now i just can ju just do the sum of every value in the uh, vector and then take the square root of that sum and so this will give me the euclidean distance in color space between my reference pixel and my um, uh, and and the pixel that I'm currently uh, looking at, so it will be every pixel in the image, and I return then the uh, color map. So let's uh, save that, and now I can uh, change this to the color space. So this will take uh, a bit uh, a bit longer. Um, and I will come back to that to, to see if we can uh, optimize that uh, a bit later. And what we see here is something that does not look right. So it doesn't seem right that the pixels in the sky here are uh, further away um, in color space than the pixels uh, in, the, in, in the sand. So what's happening here is that uh, the problem is that we are dealing with um, im here is an unsigned integer, is encoded as unsigned integer. And so when we do the uh, difference here, uh, when that difference is negative, uh, we have um, a problem of uh, overflow, and it uh, wraps around to 255. And so we are getting a much larger value just because um, we, we get into the negative. So what we can do to uh, avoid that is first cast the uh, image as a float. And so all the computations then will be done in floating points, and uh, we will get the uh, the correct uh, values. Um, so this uh, now we have our distance map is no longer based on the uh, on the distance in the spatial uh, sense of the term, but it's the distance in color space. So it's how how close a color is to the uh, reference, and. Um, 
and obviously this time the the the, the values in the in the sky will be a lot lower than the um, than the value almost uh, everywhere else. So what can we do with that? Well, it's it's a bit harder here to 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 decide what a good threshold would be. So what we the first thing that we can do is to uh, take a look at the uh, histogram of this distance map. So what is the distribution of the distances um, in my uh, in my distance map? So it's something that we've done before. We'll take just 100 bins to have just I just need an ID of uh, of what it looks like. And what I can see here is that um, my uh, for my distances I have so some pixels here that are closer than let's say 100 about 100 about uh, 19 and I have a, a large peak uh, where I get start getting the, all the pixels that are further away so let's try to have a look at what this peak uh, means and try to take a threshold around 90 and if I take yeah, my threshold around 90 I see that uh, all those pixels that are uh, closest to the reference point corresponds mostly to uh, the sky and um, some of the of the clouds and the, uh, the sea but that I have removed uh, almost all the pixels from the uh, cliffs and the uh, beach um, this still uh, does not look um, very uh, very very good uh, we see that we are still missing some pixels in the sky and we have a lot of noise uh, down there so part of the reason for that if we if we look back at, at uh, here is that if you are looking at distance as dis distances sorry in this uh, rgb uh, space we we are getting into the problem that uh, pixels that are light blue here are closer in terms of distance to uh, pixels that are um, any other color basically but also very uh, very light very very bright uh, then they are to the pixels that are uh, kind of pure p uh, pure blue so because we we are um, mixing the information of the intensity and the saturation with the information of the u in the rgb space we are actually uh, making it harder to to really um, uh, work on the, the true color um, and so what we can do is instead uh, try to, to use this distance in the HSV space where all the blue pixels will be much closer together. So ideally if we work in HSV we would have to modify this, uh, this color uh, distance computation to take into account the fact that uh, the values of the hue are wrapping around so zero is actually equal to uh, one. Um, but in this case because all of the values are actually uh, kind of uh, bunched in this side uh, of the um, of the of the space and that we don't have anything uh, almost almost uh, don't have anything in the uh, in the in the hue above 0 0.6 0 0.7 it will not change uh, much um, so we can we'll just use that uh, that method and this time we use we we'll use the hsv instead of the um, of the RGB image as our reference. And you can see here already, uh, you immediately see a much sharper contrast between the pixel in the skies, in the sky and the pixel uh, everywhere else. Uh, so let's take a look at the new, um, at the new histogram. And here we, we can clearly now see two very different peaks. So showing a distribution with two very different, um, uh, two very different distributions uh, forming the, fi the final uh, histogram uh, the one corresponding to the sky and the sea and one corresponding to everything else so if we take a threshold at around 0 0.5 in this case we'll get something that is uh, much better so we are taking almost everything in the sky now we are just missing a bit of the of the clouds and we still have a bit of noise here in the um, cliff so we can s try to see if we can adjust the threshold a little bit. Yeah, if we just do take 0 0.4, uh, so a bit closer to the to the first peak, um, then we we get almost no noise. We still have almost every uh, pixel. So we can see that changing, adjusting the slightly the um, the threshold uh, can lead to to a few different results. And we'll see in later videos ways of trying to to automatically find the uh, best uh, threshold. Um, so that's what we can do with um, with distances in color space. So it's kind of the the same uh, 
the same way that, uh, that the uh, magic ones in uh, Photoshop or something like that uh, work. It's uh, kind of the same idea. They are probably using a slightly different algorithm. But the idea is that you, you are using the notion of proximity, not just, not just in terms of, um, of distances, but also proximity in terms of how similar the two, um, the two pixels uh, are. Um, so just to, to finish, I just wanted to show uh, how we can make this computation a, a lot uh, faster by using some uh, smart uh, NumPy um, uh, broadcasting. So we actually don't need to iterate through, uh, through the entire um, through the entire uh, image here because if we just do the operation on the entire um, image at, on the entire array at, at once, it will be broadcast to every uh, pixel in the array. So if I do here in minus ref color, um, this will do uh, this, this operation uh, for every pixel of the image. So I can again do the uh, squaring. And now for the, uh, for the sum, I just have to specify that I don't want to just sum all of the uh, on all of the pixels, but I just want to sum on the uh, channel axis. So I want to sum the red with the green with the blue for every pixel, and I can uh, specify that with the axis. So if I do did axis equal zero, it would sum over um, the uh, columns. If I do axis equal one, it will sum over the row uh, the, the the rows. And if I do axis equal uh, two, it will sum over the uh, channels. Uh, no, I think it was uh, reverse for the rows and columns. Anyway, it doesn't matter here. Uh, what we want is the last uh, axis, which is the uh, channel. And finally, I can do the square root. And this should give me exactly the same thing, but much faster. Yes. So as you can see, the computation time was a lot faster here because instead of iterating through the, all the image um, with with Python, the iteration is accelerated uh, behind uh, with uh, with C um, that is used to to encode the, the NumPy library uh, in the background. So this this is goes, this goes a lot faster, and when we are working with larger images, uh, it really uh, can make a huge difference to use this kind of uh, of uh, functionalities provided by NumPy. Uh, so that's it for this video and I will see you in the next one.